Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to A Last Oasis Little Guide today. I'm going to be showing you all the resources on the medium maps. It may be a little bit late at the moment for some of you guys, but there's still a lot of fresh players jumping in from the original cradles. I'm going to show you how to get cattails. I'm going to show you how to get lots of bone and pretty much every single resource you can gather up on this map. I also want to show you a website where you can actually mark and put stuff down on a map to show where rare resources are. If you don't know, the rarer or higher quality resources are just better versions. So if you've got a bush, you'll often get better quality bushes spawn in certain locations. Well, here's a fun fact. If it spawns on that location, it will always respawn on that location on that map. The quality does change, so sometimes you'll get a lower quality or a higher quality, but it will still be better than the general resources that you gather, and it generally respawns in the same locations. The name of that website is Shifting Sands, and it looks like they're trying to do a lot in terms of keeping track of kills, as well as resources for your clans. So you can literally create a clan, create a marker, use it in Discord, and you can pinpoint and showcase to the rest of your people where exactly to get some of the best resources. The links for this website will be in the comment section down below. Go and share this out with your friends and obviously make sure you follow what I do right now. Create an account, then click on maps. What you'll find is a big selection of different style maps and locations for all of them. And they look pretty similar at the start. Each map is different. If you go from one cloudy rim to another cloudy rim, it's not gonna be exactly the same resources spawning in exactly the same locations. But if you are spending time on a particular map, the resources will respawn between two and four hours. So if you want to make a better quality walker, better quality armor, weapons, tools, you can keep revisiting the same place and you can use the maps to mark out exactly where you got that stuff. Let's create a new one, Sleeping Giants. You can pop the name of the map. You can pop how long it's gonna last for once that's up and you can put how long it opens for. You can put what region it is and then you can go ahead and click on the map and start adding loads of waypoints and markers. You've got new resource, new location, and then you can edit any resources or locations too. If you take a look, my clan have mapped out exactly where we got lots of high quality, either bone, wood, stone, fiber, you get the kind of idea. Obviously you can use this as well just for general PVP action, if you're mapping out an attack strategy on other players, but that's not what this video is about today. It's just about getting the best resources and knowing how to craft better items. If you've not realized there is a better quality item system in the game, I will briefly explain that, but I'm gonna be doing that properly in another video and showing you the difference between all the tools and the walkers. But I thought it's worth pointing out as I show you everything you need to know about some of the medium maps. So now we've established that, let's go over though where you can find the most basic of these resources, and then it's up to you to start mapping out where you can find some good ones on the server or map you're playing on. On pretty much the outskirts of any of these valleys, you'll often find lots of bush. This can be a pretty good place to get it, as you can keep an eye on the desert as well as anyone that's in the valley. By now, you should realize that using a sickle or a scythe is gonna get you more resources and you attack the bush rather than actually just press F to gather. Beeswax can be found sometimes in and amongst these pink trees, often when you're in a deserty canyon. However, you'll find more of them inside the more green, lush canyons in the pinewood looking trees. Not gonna lie though, the best place to get beeswax is on the harder maps because there's just so much more of it. So if you do need a lot of beeswax, try and make that risky move to a hard map to gather it instead of running around one of the medium maps. It's gonna be in a little white cocoon. You're gonna obviously need to use your hook to get up to it, but it should be relatively easy to get hold of. You need beeswax to make earth wax, or it's one of the options. You also need it to make a large gathering pouch, race dust, split durable water sack, and a paddle blade quarter staff from some of the stuff I've unlocked already. Mushrooms can be found deep in the valleys. You'll find an abundance of these. These red ones are harvestable and they've got uses in a number of ways. Mushrooms in a stomper is gonna give you earth wax, which is needed for lots and lots of items. Haven't tested it fully yet, but these mushrooms do make the sound as if you can harvest them, but you don't get anything when you hit. So maybe it needs more machinery. Otherwise it might just be something static to help you get up and down the cliffs. Next up we've got cattails, which is one of the most sought after resources because it helps you make rope. It's also needed to make a variety of different armors. 
Wherever you find shallow pools of water in the green little valleys, you'll often find cattails. These are an abundance in some of these on the medium maps, but you find a lot more on the harder maps. Make sure you use a sickle or a scythe to get the maximum yield from these. You'll also notice that while I'm in the water, it says collect. You can collect contaminated water and you can make it into purified water using certain things like your cook pot to boil it up or using other things like sand to help condense it and make it into purified water too. When you collect the water, normally you collect it in 50 lots, so it'll be 50 contaminated water. So it might be a little bit too much for some of your pouches if you haven't got your walker close by. You'll also find it here as well in the dry bed sections where it looks like it's the seabed areas. This is also where you'll find pearls, but we'll come to that in a little while. If you're looking for lots of cactus flesh, one of the best places to go is one of these particular cactus plants. You need to make sure though that you take out every single leaf around the cactus because there is a fruit that you can gather, but you only get it if you do make sure you do it delicately and take out the outer leaves first. You get much more cactus flesh than you normally would, so it's definitely worth taking your time with these and attacking the outer leaves first and gathering all that cactus flesh up. Once you've done that inside, you'll find the thornberry fruit. You can see it pops up with the harvest symbol. Go ahead and press it and you'll pick up the fruit. You can eat thornberries to replenish your water, but their best use is when you make Rupert repellent. Now this is gonna be something a bit later game, but when you unlock the tablet for it, which it costs a tablet to make, the Rupert repellent reduces the aggro of Rupus, so you'll be able to go and loot their areas a lot quicker and easier, but more importantly, it increases how much you'll find rare resources. Now at the moment it's not 100% clear if that means you'll get better quality resources when you've taken that potion or whether or not it means you'll just get more things like earth wax when you harvest stone. I think it's the latter, I think it's that, that you'll get certain drops when you just go ahead and harvest normal resources like rock or wood etc. I'm not going to lie, it's not easy, you still also need to get a lot of glass to make the vitamin potions with it and you're going to need a lot of cattail, it's 44 cattail. 12 thornberry and 20 purified water plus one glass to make this potion. I have got another video incoming showcasing all of the potions properly tested very soon. So these green valleys really are the best way to go and get lots of cactus flesh, the thornberries for later use and getting a bunch of cattail early on in the game. Go towards the very end of it to always get as much as you can. It's pretty basic, but remember this is a guide for noobs as well as more experienced players, but cactus fruit, you'll find them in abundance, usually to the entrances to some of the more desert canyons that you find on the map. Bone you'll find in little small amounts all throughout the desert east sections here, where you find lots of the hills and the spires alongside all the Rupert encampments. But you'll often find the bones just on the outside edges and pretty much all in and around here. I've not shown the map off that much because there really isn't that many biomes on some of these medium maps. They're not going to be that different. You will always usually find some green valleys, you'll always find these desert canyons and they pretty much look the same. It's just the size of them that change from certain different maps. Another location that you can find bone shards is in the dried flatbeds that you'll find in the middle of the map. Some of them do have water and if you take too much water it will take it all i.e. you can literally drain some of these areas from all their water. This is where you'll find some bone shards in and around the areas as you come in but also pearls. Now right now pearls don't have much use other than making triple stitch armor and that's quite an end game piece of item or it's quite advanced. The benefit of pearls really is selling it for flots at trade stations. It's a quick and easy one to gather when you just spend 20 minutes in here and they sell for quite a lot of flots. Originally I used to gather up lots of mushroom and that's what I would sell at trade stations so that I could increase my walker levels. But I've started to realize that's a mistake because you want to keep making mushroom into earth wax in a stomper station. So always keep as much mushroom as possible once you've unlocked the stomper station. Not a lot of players come this way often, so it can be a safer journey to get here and harvest and gather resources without being attacked. Now by now you should have come across one of the Nur dogs. This is how you get chitin or chitin if you pronounce it the wrong way. This is also a spot where you can get salt rock. Very rare drops, but it is this is the place where it appears. There's no real use yet. I'm guessing it's gonna come in as a later recipe to make something. So it's probably well worth stocking up on it right now if you do come across some salt rock. 
Also, I'm pretty sure once upon a time, I did manage to gather up some sulfur here, but ever since the pre-alpha, I haven't actually found any since then. So maybe it's something that'll add in the future. It does seem a bit strange that the Nur patrol this area and there really isn't anything worth gathering. These rocks particularly look a bit different, hence why I thought you might get some sulfur from it. Maybe it's something that you'll do when you're under the influence of either a potion or possibly a more advanced pickaxe. So technically not a harvestable resource like the rest of them, but I am gonna show it to you because it's pretty much the only way you're gonna find any chitin or chitin on the medium maps. Get yourself on top of your walker, hopefully it won't take too much damage from the Nur, and get on top of the Nur and start spamming it. I'm sure this will be patched in future, but right now this is a good, easy, reliable method to get some of these creatures down and hopefully get the chitin and chitin that you need. Chitin obviously is really important for making a bunch of end game materials and you're going to need it for certain walker parts too. Harvest it with a pickaxe or an axe and you should be able to get some chitin, although it's not always guaranteed. And since I just mentioned it, if you're looking for sulfur, you get it when it releases from harvesting mushrooms. You can also get it when you are harvesting the mushroom as well. But don't forget to always pick up that green gas ball when it releases. Sulfur's main use obviously is for making liquid fuel, which you're gonna to need to make ceramics and stuff like that, or makes it a lot quicker and easier. So again, it's another sort of late game item that you'll be using it for, but it's definitely something you don't want to throw away. Keep as much sulfur on you as you can. For Rupu gel, which you need to make an abundance of other stuff, including obviously fire arrows or fire bolts, you'll find that the effigies inside the Rupu encampments. Obviously pots are still going to be there and I don't really or shouldn't really have to go through some of this stuff as you kind of gathered all this on an easy map of the starter cradles. But I am going to finish off this video just by listing stuff your mum has already told you. You will find aloe plants on the map as well. They're much more in abundance here and yes they can be broken down into water or used to make sterile uh, bandages. Nearly all the fruit you find can be put in a stomper and you'll get water out of it. So if you're really desperate, it actually gives you a lot of water using a mushroom in a stomper, but not all of it will go through a cook pot. Some fruit gives you water when you cook it. Other fruit, like the mushroom, will only give you water when you put it through a stomping machine. I shouldn't have to tell you that you get palm leaves from some of the palm trees that are out usually more in the desert areas on the medium map. And if you want more Rupu vine, then obviously make sure you use a sickle or a scythe on the Rupu vines that are hanging out in the Rupu encampments. You can see one just above me there. Instead of gathering it, always make sure you just attack it. You'll always get more Rupu vine that way. Again, it's a kind of obvious tip, but I've still come across some people that didn't realize that. And so I'm just going to briefly explain a little bit more about the quality of resources. So when you've got a quality fiber bush and it says 20 out of 20, that means it's got a quality value of 20. When you combine that with other materials that have got higher quality items and then you craft something with it, you'll often give whatever you're making more durability. That's one of the big bonuses. So when you're making weapons and armor, you'll often give it more durability. It doesn't necessarily give more health or more bonuses. It's all just usually about durability. Same thing happens when you're making walkers out of a better resource items. So the higher the quality, the better overall percentage that your walker will have. It doesn't guarantee that you'll get higher health points, but it can help a lot more with slots and things like that too. It does require a proper in-depth video, and I am waiting until I've unlocked all of the tools that I want to show you the differences between what you can gather using the most basic weapons or items and tools, and what you can get from using the best tools and weapons and items. But obviously, as I haven't got a, a private server, it's taken a bit of a longer time to get some of this stuff. So I hope you find this video useful at the moment. Consider this part one of resources and explaining for a medium map. I will be showing you the hard map resources and giving you a general quick guide to that map too. And I will be showcasing all the tools, exactly differences between what they can gather and anything else you need to know about gathering and what you can do with them resources. So stick with me for all things Last Oasis. Make sure you come and join my clan. If you're looking to group up with a good bunch of people, you'll find details in my Discord. Go to the Last Oasis channel, look in the pin section, fill out the questionnaire we've got going and come and join us as we try and take over the deserts. Until next time, Ratbags, I'll see you later. Later.